Hello and welcome to the first Keysight 2 devlog. In this one I'll be showcasing the improvements to the general menu feel of Keysight 2 versus Keysight 1. I'm going to start off with talking about the way that, that sub-tabs are organized. In Keysight 1 everything is very vertically oriented and that means that every time you open up a menu like this like it expands downwards. That means if I wanted to get from here to particles, I need to scroll all the way down and then click it and then this like collapses that and opens this. It's it's not it's not very nice. It doesn't feel good. Uh, that is compared to Keysight 2, which uh, when we open up something, these sub tabs are now organized in this dedicated panel, which, you know, is independent from the actual menu that is being displayed. So if you happen to have a very large menu, uh, when you scroll through that menu, it won't affect your navigation with other subtabs. Additionally, going back to Keysight 1, a lot of the information is uh, just shotgunned into your face as densely as, po uh, as possible, you know? Like all of these sliders are very densely packed together with very little delineation. So with Keysight 2, as you can see in this menu, I've been trying to, to group things um, and space them out a lot more. So an an interactive variable is given its own bubble and the bubble will highlight when you move over it to indicate that that is one big solid block there's also a lot clearer subsection breaks so if we go back to keysight 1 um like there are subsections these headings here um but they're not very they don't actually help to break things up whatsoever <laughs> they just contribute to the sort of visual clutter you know uh, whereas in Keysight 2, yeah, uh, I'm just trying to space them out a lot more. In addition to spacing things out, as you can see with these top tabs, where I have extra space, um, I'm trying to put icons that are relevant to the action or the, or the sub tab. Um, this is just to kind of give you something to latch onto other than text, because if I just show you a big list of words, the words stop meaning anything. And a little picture here and there, I feel like, just, just kind of helps with that. Going back to this hovering, uh, when these bubbles are highlighted, they, they grow slightly, you know, they change to a different color. And they also indicate when you can perform contextual actions. And contextual actions is like a fancy way of saying, just right clicking, you know, or if I click control C, uh, it will copy this value. Uh, I don't have any kind of debug printing showing that it's done it, but if I turn these off, I'm now going to hit Control C on this, and then Control V on menu animations, and it'll paste, you know? Going back over to Keysight 1, any time where we had that kind of copy pasting, these icons were just always visible, and it's just another layer of visual clutter. Um, all of those have been, have been tidied up and moved into this right-click menu. When it comes to keeping things streamlined as well, uh, Keysight 2 has uh, a couple of neat tricks with the menu. Namely, you can do this, and this, and this. So if, for example, you aren't worried about all of seeing all of your presets, you aren't working on multiple presets, you don't need to read the tooltips because you read them when they hover, on hover, you know? Uh, you know what all these tabs do, so you don't need the icons. You just hide them, get rid of them, don't need them. And now we have more real estate for the menu, and we have more real estate for seeing the preset in action. These buttons, by the way, these are stand-in. They, they won't just be like instant on hover gray buttons. Don't worry about that. I haven't, I haven't made any nice chevrons for this just yet. You can also bind these uh, layout buttons to hotkeys. So right now I have it set up where whenever I hit T, it will basically toggle the state of all of these. So, you know, it makes it very quick and easy to be like, I'm in editing mode, bam. You know, okay, I need access to my preset tab, the uh, preset menu again, bam. There we go. And just while we're thinking about animations, that's another thing in Keysight 1. Everything is instantly responsive because, quite frankly, it's very easy to implement that. Um, animations are really, really frustrating sometimes to get them to work the way you want them to work. So Keysight 1 is just, everything is instant. Um, and that's fine, but I don't know. that Having made animations in Keysight 2, they, they kind of help uh, 
things feel less overwhelming to me. Maybe maybe it, that isn't the case to you. Maybe the extra motion is overwhelming to you. But to me, I feel like it's it just eases me in a little bit into that new menu, you know, rather than it just exploding out onto the screen instantly. Um, obviously, as you can see here, like it wouldn't be Keysight if everything was not configurable to the nth degree. So if you don't like them, you can have instant menus again. You may have also noticed that when I'm clicking buttons, uh, there's this mouse click noise. That isn't my mouse in person. Well, it might be depending on how good the noise suppression is working. But uh, UI sounds are something that I'm going to look into. Obviously, I know those aren't to everybody's taste, which is why you just turn them off and then you don't have any. Although, again, you might hear my mouse. Uh, but I'll be working with a sound designer to actually make nice sounds. There's only a click at the moment recorded from my own mouse. There are some other random cool things that I want to show off while I'm here. These aren't really specifically menu feel, so not the way that the menu feels, but just menu features. Uh, one of them, um, these text input fields, check this out. You can type in 0.1, it'll go to 0.1, how exciting. But if you type 0.1 plus 0.1, it does the maths for you. I'm hoping this will be really useful when you have a value and you're like, oh, I want the value, but half of it, you know? Also just tiny, like I'm trying to design every tiny detail this time around. So when you, like this this number, displaying this as 1.00 would look a little bit long and ugly. Um, displaying it as just one would maybe indicate that it's an integer, but it isn't. So. You know, it's 1.0 until you click and drag the slider, and then it goes to to double zero, because when you slide it here, uh, it then doesn't cause the value to to swap between 0 0.6, 0 0.65, 0 0.7. That that kind of causes like visual flickering. Um, I'm trying to avoid anything like that. Uh, I also got the color pickers set up. Um, color pickers, uh, you know, it's it's design software. Color is kind of important. Uh, so this is what they now look like. And of course, click and drag. Uh, this hex entry as well got a major improvement. Um, in Keysight 1, hex values even though I'm displaying them, they are not correct due to color space transform stuff. So they're not, they don't actually work. If you have a color that you really like and you've got the hex code for it, Keysight won't even display the, the, the hex correctly. But now, um, you know, we can, we can type in some hex codes. Uh, but if you type in, say, 10, it'll expand this out to be 10 in every, uh, you know, RGB field. Uh, if you type in, say, A, B, C, it'll split those out into each field as well. This is behavior that I've seen in other hex fields, and I love it, because you can just very quickly type in, like, oh, I want FF, you know, or like, oh, I want 18, you know, ah, it's not enough, 14, um, that sort of stuff. And then finally, uh, over in frame rate, um, frame rate display. Wah, speedy. Yeah, so this this again, previously, you know, this is what the frame rate counter was in, in Keysight. Uh, this is the, the engine native stat system, and it just displays instantaneously per frame, but that isn't very useful if you're kind of monitoring performance. You want to see if there's been any spikes. Like if I, if I do some weird stuff to the window, there we go. I'm just like minimizing and maximizing it. You can see those spikes in a way that you just can't if you do this. You know? And this also handily showcases another feature of abstracting away information that you don't always need to see. Uh, in graph mode, you'll note that there's a warning that pops up, right? In Keysight, in Keysight 2, uh, in key, sorry, in Keysight 1, um, let's see. Yeah, let's, let's go into basic, widgets, but I don't know, light bars. Like these warnings here, right? There's a lot of text on screen being displayed. Um, and I know a lot of people, like, they'll read this once and they'll go, oh, okay, cool. And then they won't really need to read it again. But it's it's just here, just in your face, you know? 
over in Keyside 2, I want this to be a case of like, you know, you turn it on, you see that there's a big warning and you're like, oh, okay, I'll read that. Okay, cool. I know that having the graph open might lower performance. Now I don't need to worry, like, I don't need that text constantly displayed on screen anymore, which is nice. And it's even animated. Look at that. And just while I'm on the topic of menus, I want to give a huge thank you to Shyked over in the Discord. Uh, Shyked gave invaluable feedback on pretty much every aspect of this of this menu design. Um, we're talking very precise things like, oh, this animation, it should be 100 milliseconds. Um, when animating menu tabs, these these entire menu blocks used to move a lot further and it was quite visually straining. Um, and Shyked is amazing at picking up on that kind of stuff and suggesting improvements. So huge thank you to Shyked for making this feel as good as it does. Right, and that just about covers it for the menu feel improvements to Keysight. Uh, I don't have all the menu elements set up, so, you know, this is something that will continue to evolve, but I wanted to show off this because this is the, this is the kind of instigating issue for Keysight 2 existing in the first place, is the way that the menu feels. Uh, so even if the menu is not 100% complete, I'm happy with the direction that the menu feel is moving in, and I wanted to show it off. Okay, right, and that's it. That, I'm trying to keep these short. So yeah, thank you very much for, for tuning in. Um, I'll be back with another devlog whenever I find some time to record one. I have a couple of extra topics that I can already cover, but then the devlogs will slow down as I'm just going to release them when a new feature is complete enough to show all of the improvements over, over Keysight 1. And a reminder that if you want to test out any of this stuff, um, there are there are development builds linked on the Discord. If you want to give feedback, join the Discord. Talk to me there. I'm way more active on Discord. Yeah, I hope you guys are excited as as, as excited as I am about this stuff. Probably not because menu animation is not something that I think many people are are passionate about. But even as somebody who's used the Keysight menu for untold hours. This one, this one feels nice. Like, I, it kind of makes me want to just click buttons for the sake of clicking buttons. And uh, I'm, I'm quite proud of that. Anyway, anyway, I'm so bad at ending videos. Uh, bye, 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 bye. Love you.